Hey everyone, it's Eric here from Netflix. Got another video for you guys today. So today looks like we're going to be looking at, who would have guessed, right? A MacBook that's in here for repair. Actually has the name right there. I don't want to show that, but it's an M1 MacBook. It's a 2020 version and it's a MacBook Air in this nice rose gold, not pink color. This one's going to be in here for repair. It's not going to be in here for data recovery. Um, we do lots of data recoveries. We do liquid spill repairs, bore level type repairs, large bore repairs, and we have M. And since we're located right outside of the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., we um, take walk-ins and we also do mail-in repairs. So we have all that contact information in the description down below if you guys are interested in that. We also have lots of videos showing lots of different hard drive repairs and other things. You guys want to check that out as well. And definitely uh, subscribe if you guys are interested in stuff like that. So today we're going to be looking at this MacBook Air that's supposedly water damaged and it's supposed to be pretty bad from what at least the technician opening it up uh, told me on it. So let's go ahead and take a look at it and see what's inside. Let's go ahead and open it up and oh man. Oh, I know the technician at least took that up and they disconnected the battery there. But man, look at this. You can see corrosion just about everywhere. I see that? That's a flood of blue. It's not an ocean. It's corrosion. <laughs> and we can also see it's close to where even the palm rest area is. This is where your trackpad connects to where your keyboard is as well. It looks to be really bad there too. So usually for something like this, we probably want to go with a replacement on the palm rest. Um, let's see about this area. This area, usually this is your power button area close to where the aux is. And it looks like that may have been impacted too. We'll have to check that out as well. And we'll see that, but look at that, man. Ooh. Okay, so let's go ahead and, um, and take a look at it. Uh, let's see what we're getting, right? Because it's super corroded there. Doesn't necessarily mean um, that it's all bad, it's all damaged, right? We probably have to put this in an ultrasonic because it's, it's pretty bad just looking at it, but it depends on what it is. So it's a very sticky there. Um, let's go ahead and just take up the board. We're gonna go under the microscope, take a look at it a little bit further. We'll take a look at some of the other areas to see if, if anything else really needs to get replaced there. So let's go ahead and just do that real quick. And one more thing before, because I was just thinking about it because it's damaged over here. You also see this, this is your battery connection. That's also been damaged, so that's corroded. Um, this area is corroded, <laughs> everything got hit. This must have been pretty bad, um, pretty bad liquid there. But we'll go under the microscope, take a look at it a little bit further, and see what's going on. So pop this up, and there's a better look at it. It's closer. So one of the concerning things uh, when you focus on this is, see that this is where the trackpad area is, and my camera doesn't want to autofocus. And this, this area is a little bit burned. That's not good. Um, hopefully it's still a little bit salvageable there because that's the most important thing, right? And we've also flipped it over, we can see there's some damage close to where the CD32 circuit is, which is over here. And I think guys just really wanna go under microscope, but, and it's usually always good to check, right? If, if there was anything here, that would be really obvious. If there wasn't a more obvious uh, liquid spill, we always like to check that. Now you have this over here. This is your side IO board. And it looks like it also got a little bit impacted. Probably doesn't look too bad. Um, so probably nothing too much, but these are always replaceable in a worst case scenario for it. And our touch ID got a little bit here of, of liquid damage and touch ID and uh, power button area. See that, but it looks like the coating kind of protected it a little bit there. Maybe we can do a little bit of a clean and that should be probably it, but nothing was really burned. But before we plug that in, we want to make sure we do that. So this is kind of a little bit of everything. Uh, as far as the palm rest goes, we can usually just replace that, especially if there is areas such as this board here, which connect um, the trackpad and also uh, the keyboard, everything together. Um, speakers, you can replace anything else that's really replaceable. You can do that, especially if there's this much, probably because it soaked it, and especially that we see the battery connection got damaged there. So it looks like they had a nice day, maybe at an ocean. <laughs> I think that's what they said. They were actually on a beach. and. Um, the wave wave came and I don't know why they were so close to, <laughs> so close to it, but it, it, it touched a little bit there. I don't know if they're recording. I don't know what they're doing, but I hope they're not one of those people that uh, try to record with, with their laptop in the middle of the ocean. So, but maybe that's it. I don't know. Who am I to judge, right? So I'm only here to repair. So let's go under the microscope. Let's go ahead and take a look at this and see what's really going on. Okay, so we're looking and we see a lot of the corrosion in lots of areas, right? So this isn't good. Let's do a quick little scan. I mean, there's not much to scan because it's everywhere. This would be one of those ones that we want to do, uh, most likely just put an ultrasonic, right? Because not only could it be surface here, but it also could be um, underneath some of the BGAs and stuff, and the solder could be loose. 
We also have, of course, this is where our backlight area is. So you see that line that looks all about the same? Those are all caps, and they're usually backlight caps. So probably if you turn it on, you probably won't get a backlight anyway. And if we look over here, let's go look to our burn connection. Now, this is probably one of the more concerning areas. It's something like this. This is your trackpad connection. And um, this also has to do with the keyboard. So if this has a problem, if there's a burn, then it's damaged, right? And you're not going to be able to use it. But maybe the, the metal, you can see them. And the idea is to get these to be a little bit aligned. But towards here, it gets a little bit damaged. This will probably be the hardest part of the repair, right? Um, unless it's just totally just dirty there. But it's kind of a little bit hard to tell. But we'll probably just clean up, work on it. Um, and that most likely trackpad and is gone completely. So let's go ahead and flip it over here. What else do we see? We see a little bit of burn, maybe a resistor there. And let's flip it over to the C32. This is another uh, worry of impact, especially when you have close to something around this area. And this is where your C32 is. Usually when you have USB-C connections, you have two ports, one's for one and then one's for the other. And you need both of them to work. So even though this one's pretty good over here, we have to have this one over here to work as well because Apple likes to make it that way. So, um, yeah, so we need to do a fix for this this area as well. You can see it's a little bit corroded there. There's just a little bit everywhere. The backside got, looks like it's a little bit better. Processor looks okay, and I think I saw a little bit here. Go ahead and check that out. Okay, so the cable looks to be fine, which I, was, I thought was a little bit burned by my naked eye, but it looks to be okay. <coughs> this is just liquid. We can just um, make sure it's a little bit clean there. And we can check our I.O. So here's your I.O. That's you get your uh, sound. And this is your headphone jack. And it's separate on this one, which is good. Not too bad. Although it got a little bit under the BGA over here. On right, chip. That's fine. Most likely the cleaning should be okay. Nothing too great. Otherwise, we can just replace it anyway. And the palm rust thing, we will. We already uh, confirmed the palm rust is going to get replaced. Especially when you have that much damage. If it feels like sticky keys, it's got to replace it. That's the best way to take care of it. So so she has backlight and has other things going on. So yeah, so what we'll do, let's get into the repair of the um, motherboard itself, logic board. We wanna do a little bit of repair first and then we'll go ahead and dip it. And um, because you wanna do repair first because sometimes the solder could be very, very loose and you can knock components out while it's an ultrasonic because the ultrasonic uses vibration and a lot of heat. So let's go ahead and do that and uh, let's get into it. We're focus on the CD32 area. That's where our charging circuit is. And we, before we do anything else, we wanna make sure that we do an overflow of it. That's gonna clean underneath with hot air and some flux. We're gonna do these on the most important areas first to make sure the solder is gonna be good. And especially on this one, this is a BGA and that will clean underneath very well. And um, you always wanna be careful because it's easy to push dirt and debris back underneath there. So we're gonna go back and we come back to this area. This area actually wasn't too bad. This is where your trackpad area was. Um, it was a little bit dirty, but we were able to at least clean it up there. Um, and it didn't look to be too bad. We'll also go ahead and test it to make sure. But first, let's go back to ultrasonic, then do that first, and then let's go ahead and test it, see if it's gonna work. If you guys are interested on a detailed video on the ultrasonic cleaner and how it works, we actually have a dedicated video on that. I'll link at the very end of the video. All right, so we, we did a fix for it there, as you guys saw. And um, what we also did was a palm rest replacement there, which included the battery and a lot of these, these areas of the board. Usually just better to do a replacement for them, especially if you're going to have a problem possibly with the battery. You don't want to do that because it does have a circuit board there. And um, we kept the same I.O. over there because it looked to be pretty good. And Touch ID connects into that. You have to keep Touch ID for Touch ID to work. Otherwise, you could just get a button. But we want Touch ID to work, right? Because that's part of the Apple experience, <laughs> if you would call it that. So let's go ahead and let's try it. Um, the problem is when we had the trackpad connected, it was mainly shorting. That was the problem there. Now we have it now and we want to make sure the trackpad and keyboard work because bringing the keyboard is pretty much where um, the, the trackpad's part of that, right? So it has lots of components. So you have to have uh, usually both working for it to go. Made lots of videos on it, lots of um, examples showing that. And just a lot of times whenever you have a problem, with uh, both the keyboard and the trackpad, you usually just have one of the problems, which is normally just uh, the trackpad or trackpad cable, because there's so many things going into that. So let's see, so we plug it in. We're getting our 20 volts now, which is good. And now it looks like we get it to turn on. You also heard um, the, the sound, because the sound comes from the speaker. The speaker comes from the I.O. board over there, actually working uh, fine, because I didn't have a speaker, if you noticed, uh, plugged in over here. 
Um, yep, that's the customer information. We'll definitely make sure we cover that up. But that, everything looks to be pretty good. Um, one more time. Let's go ahead. And, so let's go ahead and make sure that the, the trackpad works. Can't see it on there. I'm trying to look for it. Oh, right, here it goes. I couldn't even see it at first. Yeah, I see it. I'm gonna go over. I guess the icon there. There you go. So we see it. It's working. And if we type, we get a type. So keyboard's working too. And everything looks to be good. Hey everyone, so I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I'm doing the fix for the A2337 uh, M1 MacBook Air. If you guys did, please leave a like. It really just helps us a lot. Again, we're located in the Northern Virginia area, right side of our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. We take lots of walk-ins. We also have mail-in repair options. If you guys are interested in that for doing any type of liquid fuel repairs and even data recovery. So go ahead, check that information out. It's located in the description down below. So hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like. It really does help us a lot. Subscribe for more content. See you guys next video. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care.